with the one of the most common questions that we get, which is um, feeling the pressure of when to go from A double A to triple A. Like, yeah. what age do you have to make that jump? Um, when do you think that it actually makes sense? When do you think like young is too young? Uh, and I know just to maybe lay out the caveats before you answer, there isn't a one answer to most of the questions. Like we always say, it depends on the circumstances. So the answers that you give for all of these things are very situational and they're very circumstance dependent. But this is kind of just if we take a generic case of what typically you've seen with your experience or what you've been through, um, kind of how you made decisions through this stuff. And then hopefully people will be able to kind of extract things and apply it to their own situation. But I've, we always say this, just don't take everything we say as gospel about everything, yeah. but we'll start, we'll start on that one. Yeah. So like the, the best way to do this for me is like, to just explain how I, how I raised my kid. Right. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way, cause he's, um, he's had a lot of success in hockey so far. And, um, and I feel like that I have a pretty common sense approach to it because I've got a level head about it. Right. Yep. So I'm not over the top worried about him at, at any point in my life being a, NHL player or getting a school paid for. I was never worried about that. So that never played into the role. Okay. Yep. So for me, he was a, my, my kid was a pretty good hockey player when he was young, not the best in the world, but pretty good. You could see that there was a foundation that if he continued to work at it, there, there is a possibility of him being a pretty good player. And I was, I was saying this when I was, he was eight or nine. I'm saying a possibility of him being a decent player, mm -hmm. but I knew that I couldn't even make that judgment until he was about 14 years old. Okay. And it's, and, 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 and for obvious reasons, or maybe it's not so obvious that a lot of things can change from zero to 14 or zero. <laughs> You're born. Uh, <laughs> a zero. lot of things could happen up until 14. And one of the main things is puberty and body checking. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's those are those are two main things, and then after that, the game can completely change for a lot of people, and then it changes after as well. But that was the most important thing. That so, anyways, I looked at my I looked at my kid and I said, "Yeah, he's a pretty good player." All right. It was and my intentions one hundred percent was the bantam level, fourteen years old. Okay. So you'd have so what would that mean in the OHL terms? Even though I wasn't necessarily thinking in 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 that. Um, thought pattern yet in, in getting drafted as a 16 year old that would mean you'd have two years of uh bantam, three years ban two years of bantam hockey so and one year of minor midget so you 16 you 15 you 14 to play triple a hockey if you can't figure out triple a hockey by in three two to three years then you probably should never jumped anyways yeah. so you don't have to do it any earlier than that so anyways my reasoning was that i want to stay home i want to save some money not even save money it wasn't even saving money it was like I had a business, we had a life, we had two other kids and my son plays hockey and he happens to be pretty good at it. So what? What, what like, why would I go ape shit over that? Yeah. Right. So we, and I knew that from a hockey standpoint, he was, had good buddies that he went to school with. We had friends sort of in, in that group that we could hang out with and live across the street or five minutes away. It was easy. Life was easy. And we lived in our, our little community. And what I loved about it also is that, you know, when, when the kids would have a little bit of success, all the, the whole community came out. So it was like a really tight knit thing. I liked it. So anyways, I, I and, and then they, they had a successful year where they won um, uh, an, an Ontario championship at the A level, which was great for them. And then I noticed the, the, after the, the year after that, that the kids that were one year older, I looked at the, what the A level of hockey in our area looked like or in the league looked like. And I had every intention of leaving my son, but in, in, in that level. But I looked and I said, I can't do it now because I, and, and it's not because it was going to ruin his career. What, what, the point of this was I looked and I said, I saw all the kids that left to go to the triple a loop. And there wasn't a whole lot of like the quality players left. So does that mean he, he couldn't be a good hockey player? No. But for me, it was like, I want him to play that to a level so that he can just play hockey and have fun. And, being the best guy on the ice is great because you have the puck and you have confidence and all that stuff because you'll get straightened out sooner or later, right? But what? But more important than more important than the, it being watered down. Like I told the people, like everybody around here that because I, I trained most of the guys, 
They said, are you moving them to AAA next year? We're all going. I said, if you just stayed where you are, we can do this for three years and have great, I mean, great hockey. No one wanted to listen. So everybody took off to the AAA. So we had to go, not we had to go because the pressure of anything else, but I looked at what the pressure was for me was I, I have a kid that loved hockey and had some skill. And when, when, when it was time to play or to go hang out with friends, that's more along the line or pretty much the line that he wanted to do. He wanted to do some hockey stuff. He wanted to play sports and he was committed to like a lot of fitness and stuff like that. Whereas the mentality of the kids at that age, 13 or 12 years old, was more like they're ha- having fun. dirt by- And that's all good. But he was a little bit more committed. And, and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer you are who you hang out with. And this is something that he wanted to pursue and he was decent at. So I said, well, we, gotta, we do have to put you in a decent atmosphere. So would the... Would the, if I can kind of boil that down, yeah. would it be your decision was kind of based on what is the environment that my kid will be in if we stay at this level versus this level? Yeah, it was Did two. It kind of boil down to two, that? Two, two, it, the, 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 the league itself just got watered right down. You took basically anybody that was a, that was a good player that gave competition, they were, they were all gone. So to have them play, so essentially what it was, after that, it would have turned into an almost like a house league. And I understand people's decision now. It's like, is he playing house league or is he playing, you know? So I understand that part. And the second part was like, yes, the environment. I wanted to be in an environment where, and he wanted to be in an environment where guys loved hockey. And that was when he was thir- 12, 12, 13? 12. 12, yeah. Okay, so let's flip the, let's, let's do this two ways. Um, first thing I want to say is, what do you think would have happened had he stayed in double A? Another year, two years. Probably would have scored like ridiculous goals every game. But do you think, yes, but do you think that that would have been like the worst? Would he no, have been no, fine? No, no, no. Do you no, think no. He, he eventually would have jumped anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you think yeah, it, yeah. basically things would yeah. have been the same for him? Yeah, the only, the only thing I would have said that is, uh, uh, well, because once he went to the AAA, the only thing that was better, practices weren't any better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing that was better is that there was more kids want, that wanted to compete the to a again. certain degree. They were yeah. still missing some key pieces in the in the right. in the league because not everyone jumped, but most. Mm-hmm. And that would be the biggest thing is that the, the games were better because you go out of, you go out of town and you play um, a little bit better hockey. Having said that, it wasn't the greatest hockey yet. Right. So my point of of bringing that up is this is a very popular question that. And people think it's like super consequential. And my point, as we always say, is in youth hockey, there's no one decision of when you make the jump, assuming you're going to make the jump, because at some point you should, you're going to have to make the jump at some point. And if you wait an extra year versus not, if the kid is a good player, it's not something that's going to ruin their life. And that's the only reason why I'm, I'm kind of having you play the other side of that, because that's, that's the pressure, right? You just pointed out yourself as the parent, you were feeling the draw that's pulling you to triple a because you say, okay, most of the good players are gone. The kids that are left here don't really have that seem to have that bite for wanting to pursue hockey to the degree that maybe my kid is showing. And then the other thing, I would say the other piece that that was probably uh, leaning towards uh, helping him make that decision was that he was not going to say he was getting bored, but it was getting less challenging for him. And, and that, that's, and that was like a, a big thing too. It was like, he could like he could cheat the game easily. So he also no seemed like he was ready to make the jump. He, 100% yeah. he was ready to to get challenged because it right. was like it was almost at, to to a point where it was getting boring. So then let's let's stick on this for a second because yep. one thing that you said about it was uh you could tell your kid was pretty good. Yeah. And you are fortunate in that you can make that call, but a lot of parents either don't know because maybe the kid isn't like so dominant that it's obvious or the other side where some parents think their kid is really good when they're not actually that good. So they're expecting, maybe I'm going to make the jump to triple a and they don't because maybe they're not as good as they thought, or they don't have the hockey knowledge to really understand what exactly to look for. Mm -hmm. So kind of maybe if you want to throw a couple thoughts on how to judge outside Uh, of the obvious, like your kid's obviously the best. No, 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 that's, that's, that's a good question. Fair question. Um, so number one is like, there was a, an engagement level in his, that, that we came to practice in end games. He couldn't wait. 
Like it was like I'm in and nice. I and I yeah. care. He cared. Yeah. When it was a a win or a loss, and like he was really happy when they won. Really, like right pissed when they lost. So he was not just... like a little baby slamming yeah, yeah, a yeah. stick, but it was like he, he and he would be like when guys were um maybe not engaged he would be like i don't understand that like they don't care right mm -hmm. so that was like from a mental standpoint i could see that he was now don't get me wrong because i don't want people to say think that if your kid has a little temper tantrum when things don't go their way that that's competitiveness mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like the yeah. little baby thing he was just he deeply cared about his team number two was he was not, and i want to make this clear he wasn't the best he was up there but he wasn't the best at eight nine. But you knew that. Okay, out of if I watched the game just very objectively, he sticks out like a sore thumb. So that's what it was for me. So when you're watching your kid, that's what you're looking for. Is like, are they a very good skater? Like and maybe your judgment is poor, but you know who can skate. Um, do they do they make plays with the puck, or they just skate through people? And that's not necessarily meaning that's a bad thing. But can they make plays? Do they have a decent shot? Are they competitive? But there's a baseline that sticks out like a sore thumb that would say, okay, this, my son is someone I could maybe, that maybe there's something there. So when I looked at it, there's a foundation. Just like I look at, you know, I could look at with Noah Morneau, who plays for the Spitfires now. When he played, uh, he's a year older than Charlie was. When he played, he was really good. Like you watched him and, and you know, people said, wow, man, this guy's like, he's the best skater. He's got the best edges and all this crap, right? Uh, and he, and when I watched him, I said, yeah, he's good. And he's competitive. Yeah. I like that kid. Like you could just stand out. You knew that he was going to be something. So without necessarily being the best, like dominating the game left and right, you should be able to find some indicators pretty easily of whether or not your kid has something there or not. But the, the key on that for that, I'll say for the parents is it's, it's very important that you're honest about what exactly you're watching, because that's where the disconnect happens a lot. And that's why before I asked that question, I was saying a lot of parents will think their kid is better than they are or whatever and we talked about this last week how you know you get parents that are cutting up other kids saying well he's no good and and because they're having some success maybe they're a little jealous and they want to carve them but they don't know what the judgment is they don't know what the criteria is or what the characteristics of a good player even is so you need to try to be honest with yourself of what what you know and don't know as a parent maybe and whether you can actually tell if your kid is good or not so it's like here's the thing right you know, we, we say all the time, you don't have, like, just because you're good at nine doesn't mean you're going to be good at um, 20 or 16. And that's, a, that's, a, that's true. But it's also true that, you know, I, I, I saw someone say in the comments, every guy that I know that played the NHL was a stud when they were nine. And that's probably true because that foundation is there. That's the, the bottom line. So, like, and if we look at, in the age groups that we teach every year, you got the foundation of kids that have a really, really good base. And the best ones usually, not usually, but very, very often come up and they're very good quality players later, right? So I look at my kid's age group and the, the best kids on that team are playing in the OHL now, the three best guys, right? So they stick out. So my point is, is that quality hockey, like a quality hockey player, it's not like you have to, it's not like you have to say he's the best player or whatever, but there's something that sticks out like a sore thumb. And when it stick, when you stick out like a sore thumb, then that means something. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep, 100%. It's like if you're, if you're looking to say, well, I think he can make it, that's, it's not the time. Mm -hmm. It's not the time. Yeah. Or, or, or it doesn't matter whether you try or not yet. You could wait another year. Or, to or try you should or wait. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, okay, that's cool. So then kind of maybe um, tailoring in with that is, the, so that was the pressures to jump to from A to AAA or what, when to jump to AAA. Yeah, and then, and then the final thing with that would be like, now when you start getting to that 13, 14 year old age, then I think it's time to start looking, as D Andy Delmore said, like a couple weeks ago, or he did a podcast with us, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, that'll be out a couple weeks, yeah. people, by the way. Yeah, so when you start getting 13, 14, and there's hitting, and you see a commitment, like the, now it is the time, mm -hmm. right? Like now you see your kid practicing, and 